you be missing out on if your podcast never ranks if your podcast never hits into the top charts what do you think you could possibly be missing out on is it just a vanity metric ranking a podcast having your podcast in the top charts is that something that matters or not i'm here to share with you that i truly believe that it matters wholeheartedly believe that you need to get your podcast ranking on the top charts. It's not difficult to do. And if you don't do it, you're missing out on the two things that every podcaster really wants. Every single podcaster that I know wants at least one of these two things, if not both. They want to leave an impact on humanity. They want to leave a legacy. They want to add value to the world. Or two, they want to make money. They want to make an income. Income and impact are the two things that every podcaster I know wants at least one of them. And unfortunately, you're not going to be making an impact or income if you don't find a way to get your podcast on the top charts. So today in this discussion, I want to share with you truly one of the most remarkable ways, one of the most foolproof ways that is going to make sure that you're getting your podcast actually ranked on the top charts, which will mean that Podkite, Chartable, Listen Notes, Apple pushes you in front of new listeners. You'll no longer have to be spending a whole bunch of capital on Facebook ads and all these other platforms to be able to grow your podcast. Because if you can trigger the algorithms the way I share with you today using the 535 method, if you end up doing that, you're going to trigger some algorithms where it's going to be obvious for the platforms. Listen notes, top 1%, um, Chartable, Podkite, Apple and other top charts, you're going to be ranking and they will be promoting your podcast. If you build it, they will come. Generally, not a true statement. If you build it, they will come from Field of Dreams. Generally, not a true statement. It will take you triggering an algorithm in order to get ranked under the top charts. Apple doesn't get just ecstatic just because you started a podcast and start promoting you from scratch. You've got to actually trigger these algorithms first. And that's what we're going to share with you now so that you can make an impact and an income through your podcast. Again, it's the 535 method. And I'm going to go through it rather quickly, but at least at the speed where I know you're going to have actionable takeaways where you can literally use this system to get your podcast ranked. Just like I've worked on, on my podcast and several other people's podcasts using, using this exact same strategy. So 535, first I'm going to share with you five things, then I'm going to share with you three other places to do that, and I'm going to share with you five considerations to make it more impactful. And then I'll just give you a little bit of the like details step by step so that it's clear and you won't make a mistake. You'll easily be able to use this. So 535. So in the beginning, we're talking about you need to have people start following your podcast, following or subscribing to your show. Those people, not other people and this is critically important that it's those people actually are going to be downloading the algorithm and they change all the time. And I can't profess to always be on the fourth front, but I will say that when using the 535 system that I'm giving you, it always works. So 
there definitely is algorithms that show and have been doing this foolproof for the last several years that I've been helping other people do it. Those people that follow need to download episodes. Those people that download those episodes, they have to listen. They can't just download, they got to listen. So number three is listen. Number four is that those people that are listening to the podcast are actually giving you some social proof by leaving an honest rating and or written review for your show. Next, number four is the social proof for R&R, ratings and reviews. And the fifth and final thing that seemed to always tra- trigger the algorithms within these top charts to actually get you ranked and they'll start promoting you is that those people who have subscribed or followed to your podcast and also downloaded some episodes and they're actually listening to them and uh, leaving an honest rating and written review about what they're hearing, not just like a, I met this person once, but they're talking about the podcast. They got to keep coming back to the podcast. That's number five. So again, the system today is five, three, five. So those five things that need to happen if you want to trigger algorithms is get followers who actually download and listen and take the action to give you a rating and written review. And they keep coming back to the podcast. That's the goal. When you do all five and they're done in order, you're going to boost your podcast into the rankings so that all of these uh, top charts are promoting you and pushing you in front of new listeners. You're getting, uh, when they're listening to a similar podcast, your podcast is showing up right there. It's going to allow you to be able to make more money through your podcast and make a bigger impact through your podcast. And I talked to you about the three in the middle of the two fives. Five, three, five. The three is the three platforms that my team generally uses when we do this for our podcast or for other people's podcasts. The three platforms that we like to use are meetup.com, facebook.com, and linkedin.com. Write them down. Meetup, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I love these three platforms because you're able to identify an exact avatar. You're able to simply and easily identify where they live, what they're interested in, in many different ways. For example, on Meetup, you can go to certain cities and then you can pick uh, certain topics that those people are interested in. And then you can even find which ones are going to which events, how many times they've uh, uh, RSVP'd to an event. And if they went, you have all that information, all that data on the perfect avatar that is for your podcast. Same thing on Facebook. You've got all these Facebook groups. You can see the people that are active. So you look for your avatar, where do they hang out? And you can find those people. And also LinkedIn has been very beneficial for our team to find people's avatars, to, uh, to target them, to start a direct message campaign. Oh, and I just gave it away. We are talking about DMs. So in all of the marketing strategies that my team's implemented in the past to grow podcasts, Facebook ads, um, banner ads, blogs, advertising on other people's podcasts, I love the strategy of the direct message campaign. If it's done right, if it's done the way I'm teaching you today, if it's done right, you're going to find that you'll do those first five things in order. You get them to follow, then download, then uh, then they will listen, and then they'll rate and review, and then they'll keep coming back if you do the DMs correctly. But remember, the three are the three platforms that we prefer to use that I think you should be using or having your team use. You could have a virtual assistant be doing this for you as a third party so that you don't have to self-promote yourself. You can actually have a third party, a a VA, taking care of this. You can have a friend doing this for your podcast, and you could be doing it for theirs. So remember those three platforms. That will benefit you a lot. Which, why use those platforms? Again, what was the takeaway? It was the fact that you're able to identify and narrow in on that exact avatar, that listener that you are looking for. 
And then what are the five considerations when you're doing these DMs? So remember I gave you the five things that need to happen, the three places that we go for the DMs, and now we're doing the five considerations that are absolutely fundamental and most people fail at. So I'm gonna give you those five right now. It, these DMs need to be short and sweet. That's number one. Number two, you never share a link ever without permission. You always wait for permission. Number three, ask, don't tell. Remember that, let that sink in so that you'll, you never let your teammate, your third party, who's doing these DMs for you ever forget that one critical fact. Ask, don't tell. We'll get into that in a second. The fourth one is it needs to be personalized. We're not copying and pasting. We're not making a blanket template and sending it to a thousand people. If you do that, by the way, you're going to get flagged. Facebook's going to shut you down. Meetup's going to block you from sending messages. LinkedIn isn't going to let you keep sending messages that are just copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. So they need to be personalized. You'll need to mention something about them. After learning about them, you're looking at their profile, reading it, uh, understanding what they did, what they're into, and you'll say something that is personalized. And the fifth and final one of the 535 system, the last five, is that you want to slow play. The idea here is if we're asking for something, if we're looking to, for example, if we're looking to get married, you, you want to get married, maybe you're not married yet, or maybe you're looking for a second spouse, who knows? Um, what you don't do is go and find somebody and, and then just get on your knee and say, uh, I'm attracted to you, marry me. We don't do that. We don't say anything like, Hey, I'm, I'm a handsome guy. You should, you should be thinking about marrying me. That's not how we do it. We slow play. We slow play. When you're doing these private messages, let's talk about short and sweet, no links, ask, don't tell, personalize, and slow play. Those five things. Let's talk about those real quick. Slow play. What does that mean? That means we're not going in and saying, hey, have you heard of this podcast? That's not the first thing we say. We, we're not jumping in to a, a relationship. We're courting for a while. We're dating for a while. We're getting to know each other for a while before we ever go that far, okay? So <clears throat> slow play. This means that we take our time. In some cases, it might take six months. Three to six months is not uncommon for these DM campaigns that actually work. They're worth it. They take time. They take effort but you're having everlasting listener base who shares your podcast and now you're getting ranked and the algorithms inside the podcast platforms are promoting you. Such a huge benefit. So make sure you're slow play, um, personalize all the messages. So you might say something to the effect of, hey, name, not, not even hello name. Hello name is too formal. It's, hey, name, you want to be like you're, just connecting with somebody. It's, this is not copy and paste type of stuff. This is not formality. This is connection. So you might say, hey, name, I saw XYZ about you. That's cool. How'd you get into that? That might be the first thing. Then the second message might be, awesome. If I wanted to do the same thing, what would you recommend? The third message might be something like, um, I, really, I really appreciate I really appreciate your time. That means a lot to me. May I ask you X, Y, Z? You can tell that this is positive. It's short and sweet. We haven't sent a link. We haven't even really talked about your podcast yet. We're slow playing it. We're personalizing it. We're getting to know people. Because of how natural the, these DMs can be, if you do it right, if you do it the way I'm teaching you now, it, they become extremely effective. For example, we get a high percentage of the people that, we, that actually respond to us. If they respond, we get a high percentage of, of them, usually over 50% to subscribe to the podcast, to follow the podcast. Because of these natural connections and us asking, basically, once we finally get to the place like where we say something to the effect of... <clears throat> 
that was that was really valuable. I wonder if you've heard of the XYZ podcast because they say something similar. And you're going through this. And I will just pause for a second and let you know, a lot of people haven't heard of your podcast. It's crazy. Uh, my podcast, the podcast on podcasting, we have, I have my team doing these DM campaigns for my podcast. And many, many people say, oh, I've, I've, I haven't heard of that podcast yet. And my team will say, I, I thought of it because you said that this thing about you. And I wondered if you, I wonder if you want me to send you the link, I'd be happy to send you a link. Question mark. Remember, I said, ask, don't tell. Most people that are doing DMs are like shoving stuff down your throats. They're just like cramming this down and trying to really just force you into learning something or knowing something and self-promotion and blah, blah, blah. We're spending a lot of time. If you've noticed, I always say, I always say, that's great. I'm proud of that. That's impressive. And then I start a question. Have you ever heard of this one podcast? I'm curious if you ever heard of this one podcast. But that's not the first message. That's several messages down the road. It's like dating. You want to slow play. You don't want to, you don't want to scare somebody off. You don't want to make them feel like you're spamming them, like you're just copying and pasting stuff, like you have some uh, urgent agenda. This is this longer, slower type of connection, more organic feeling uh, connect, uh, uh, relationships end up being the most valuable for the podcast, especially if they can be done through a third party. Um, for example, if you have your VA taking care of this on in place of you, and and they're not they're not a part of the podcast, they're they're not a host of the podcast, their name is not on the podcast, they don't work necessarily for the podcast company, they might work for your company, but you have them promoting a podcast that they like and are affiliate and in a way are affiliated with but it's coming from not the host. That can be a beautiful thing. When it's coming from the host, it can be a little off-putting. It could be scary. It could be like, whoa, you're just self-promotion. But when it's coming from a third party, it feels so much better. So use these things. Remember, it's 535. The whole goal, goal for promotion, promoting a podcast is to make sure that you can make more of an impact and income. Leave your legacy. Look, if you don't have listeners, you may as well just be doing a diary. If, if you're the only person who listens to the podcast, it's a personal diary. When you implement the strategy, the 535, you're going to get in front of so many people organically in so many ways. It's going to be impossible not to leave your impact on the world. It's going to be impossible not to be able to make an impact and finally monetize your show. So in brief, those 535, you need people to follow and those followers need to download and those downloaders need to listen and those listeners need to rate and review and those rate and review people need to come back and listen to the show more than once. The three places that you're going to go to are Meetup, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And then the five considerations when utilizing the private message campaign within Meetup, LinkedIn, and Facebook is keep it short and sweet. Don't send any links without permission. Ask questions at every single one instead of telling. Personalize the messages. This isn't just copy and paste. And slow play. Don't go for the kill right out of the gate. Don't propose the first time you meet them. Use this to get your podcast ranked. I cannot wait to hear how it works for you. Thank you.